Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Keating, thank you for inviting me to testify today. I ask that in addition to my testimony, one two-page uh, addition be entered into the record, if that's okay. Without objection. Thank you. I'd like to focus on two points. First, why offering Pakistan civilian nuclear incentives is self-defeating. A second, why implementing Title V of the Nuclear Nonproliferation Act of 1978, which calls for non-nuclear cooperation and energy assessments for developing states, would make more sense. Several U.S. analysts recently championed offering Pakistan civilian nuclear incentives like those we've extended to India. They argue the U.S. could offer Pakistan a one-two-three agreement as it did for India or sponsor Pakistan's entry into the nuclear suppliers group as it's now trying to do with India. This would enable Islamabad to acquire nuclear supplier group controlled nuclear goods and a portion of the equal treatment that it seeks. Short of NSG membership, they argue, the U.S. might push the NSG to waive restrictions on NSG controlled exports to Pakistan, something the NSG has already done at Washington's urging for India. This line of thinking appears to have been behind the administration's recent talks uh, with Pakistani officials. In the end, however, no deal was cut. This should not be surprising. First, offering civilian nuclear incentives to moderate to moderate Pakistan's nuclear posture is diplomatically risky. Pakistan and China may object to the U.S. pushing for India's membership in the NSG, but trying to address their concerns by offering Pakistan NSG membership or an NSG waiver is not only certain to upset India, but Pakistan, which demands being treated in an identical fashion with India. This, though, would require sealing a formal nuclear cooperative agreement that would upset India even more and cause a possible backlash here on the Hill. It would also likely prompt Israel to ask for similar treatment, which in turn would complicate nuclear restraint efforts in the Middle East. Second, it undermines nuclear restraint. The U.S. tried trading civilian nuclear incentives with India in 2008. Washington persuaded the NSG to allow India to import uranium for its civilian nuclear program. Yet this has only allowed India to dedicate more of its meager domestic uranium production to military purposes. Bizarrely, then, our peaceful nuclear initiative with India now is enabling India to make more bombs. Thus, Chairman Corker of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee recently noted that his vote in favor of the deal back in 2008 was a mistake, that it has only undermined international nuclear restraint. Certainly, Pakistan's military would benefit no less from access to internationally uh, available advanced nuclear technology and goods. Finally, nuclear power is a poor form of energy assistance. The USAID, the World Bank, and the Asian Development Bank, institutions dedicated to upgrading Pakistan's energy system, have all focused on non-nuclear projects. These include Pakistan's electrical distribution system, only rough of, roughly half of Pakistanis are able to connect to the central grid, reforming the financial management of its utilities, which continually fail to collect payment for electricity supplied, increasing energy efficiency, Pakistan's rating is among the world's worst, and preventing nuclear electrical, excuse me, electrical theft, which accounts for a disturbing percentage of the electricity consumed. Increasing utilization of natural gas, hydropower, solar, and wind resources, of which Pakistan has a considerable amount, and development of gas and oil pipelines. These outfits understand what several detailed energy assessments have determined. Nuclear power can only supply a small fraction of Pakistan's electrical needs and is extremely expensive. By now, we should all know this. Much of New Delhi's nuclear weapons program was a direct result of Eisenhower's Atoms for Peace program. I know this is the 62nd anniversary today of that program. India's first bomb came from plutonium produced in a Canadian reactor, moderated with U.S. supplied heavy water, reprocessed in a U.S. designed plant. India promised material to be strictly used for peaceful purposes. The rest is history. Recently, though, we compounded matters with the 2008 India nuclear deal. We need to stop pushing such deals. At a minimum, Congress should demand that the executive implement Title V of the Nuclear Nonproliferation Act 
which calls for non-nuclear cooperation and energy assessments with developing states. Much of this work is currently done by AID, but not under the Act. The Act calls for country-specific assessments, annual reports, and the creation of a non-nuclear energy Peace Corps. Unfortunately, it has never been implemented. After 37 years and the recent events regarding Pakistan, Congress should hold a hearing and find out why. Thank you.